You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another epic episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob. Thank you guys for joining us. As always, we appreciate it very much. This is episode 973. Hope you're having a great day. Hope you're getting some flying in. It's rainy here, which is actually a fabulous thing in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Mm -hmm. We don't get a ton of rain, so when Mm -hmm. it does rain, it's just a really wonderful thing. It's one of the few days that you can't actually see the entire city from my drive in the office, Rob. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's, yeah, because Albuquerque is a valley. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's not exactly like that, like that but... It, it uh, is exactly like that, but anyway. Well, because the west side <laughs> then goes to, you know what, why do I take the bait? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you were saying it's a valley. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why Paul can see the whole city when he's coming in <laughs> from work. I live in the foothills, so he it makes, makes it pretty in the easy. Foothills. Uh. Coming down into the valley, we should really move on. <laughs> All right, well, let's go ahead and get right into today's question. So whether you're like us and you're dealing with April showers bringing May flowers, which they don't really do here in the desert southwest. Um, Not true. Yeah, that's it's literally not true. Or you have a sunny, beautiful area to fly. We appreciate you listening in and would just like to give a humble shout out to our friends at Autel Robotics for the Evo drone. If you need a drone that you need to fly about anywhere and you don't want to have to log into an internet application because you're in an area with no internet, what do you do? Well, you pull out the Autel Evo drone. It's just like a Mavic drone, very similar. It's controlled in very similar ways as well. Except you don't need a tablet, you don't need a phone. Literally everything is built right into the remote and everything is built right into the drone. So wherever you are, you are ready to fly. So check out Altel Evo. We really like them. And let's go ahead and let's play the question. My name is Adam Michaud of New World Industries Commercial Photography. And I have come across someone that has a part 107 certificate that offers to go and supervise drone pilots without a part 107 certificate so that they can charge for doing drone work without having to get the part 107 certificate themselves. Can you clarify if that is actually legal or not? Because some of the things that I have seen from FISDO officers is that while a part 107 holder can supervise somebody that if somebody is trying to make money off of said work that they need to have one of their own. Thanks. Thank you, Adam. Appreciate the question. And uh, if you have a question, go to astroneu.com. We'd really love to hear from you. This show is about you and it doesn't work without you. And that is primarily a comment about your questions. So uh, get those in. We'd love to hear from you and it makes us happy to answer your questions. So don't hesitate. This is uh, actually fairly clear, I think, in the law. Um, I, I think it's pretty, pretty clear as well. But one thing I wanted to hit on just before we get into the minutia of this particular question is that if you're a drone pilot and you're following the law, you're in compliance, then you should really not be worrying about people who are not in compliance, whether it's legal or illegal, questioning it or not questioning it, taking time out of your day worrying because every minute spent worrying is every minute that you just took off at the end of your life. To all my homie pilots out there, to my, f- my friends, family, males, females, you guys, it is so simple. If you are flying under the law, you have nothing to worry about. If you are flying under the law and you have a crash and something happens, your insurance will cover it because you are an FAA certified pilot operating according to the guidelines of the FAA. If you are not a pilot that does that, that there are significant ramifications I don't think people have really talked about in the community. Uh, As we have said this on shows prior, it's really not the FAA that controls the aviation industry, right? The FAA can say, you know, just like we saw with the 737 MAX, perfect example, um, you know, the FAA is not in control of the industry. Why do I say that? Well, 
you know, Southwest, American Airlines, United kept flying 737 MAX after the issue. They just kept flying them. The FAA essentially said, you know, they're safe to fly. Everything is fine. Don't worry about it. But the insurance companies came in and said, well, hold on a minute. Other people in other countries are grounding these aircraft. And then Southwest decided to ground their fleet. And then the next day, FAA grounded all 737 MAXs. What really matters is the insurance industry. An insurance agent can literally go down the jetway to any aircraft and showcase a problem and tell the airliner that they're not insured for that particular aircraft. They would then not fly that aircraft at all because if something were to happen, there's no way to recover all those damages. Now with a drone pilot, let's say that you're not licensed. Um, in fact, we actually just trained a trained an officer who hasn't been licensed for a while. And I listened to Ted explain this to the officer, Rob, and it really made me think. And he's like, you're not going to be the, uh, the asshole that crashes his drone and won't be able to pay for anything. He's like, that sucks. He's like, but what really sucks is let's say that you're flying a drone or you're flying a helicopter, you don't have an FAA certificate, and you crash and you die. Okay, now obviously there's a significant amount of probability of that happening in a manned aircraft than an unmanned aircraft. But I would say don't be fooled. The amount of damage that you could cause with an unmanned aircraft is also substantially high. That being said, let's say you're using your farmer's insurance, your state farm, whatever, 60 bucks a year to insure the drone. And you tell your, your agent, no, no, Agent Rob, I'm not flying it for money. But the agent finds pictures on your wife's real estate profile that illustrates drone photography. And they realize that your wife is not FAA licensed, right? So let's say you are flying uh, an Inspire 2 and with an X7 camera and you've got it licensed or you do not have an RPIC license. You are not FAA licensed in any way whatsoever. You do not hold a certificate. Um, you are just flying willy nilly. Let's willy nilly. I love yeah. So let's say that you're flying real estate and an old lady, for whatever reason, walks out into your shot. Let's say that you're doing a big droney from the back door out and up to show the neighborhood, and you're going to reverse that footage so that you can transition through the door. I love it, but what happens if a lady all of a sudden walks out of the door and trips and just literally falls towards the drone and out of pure reaction you reverse the pitch bring the drone away but you don't realize how close the drone is and you hit yourself right let's say that something catastrophic happened to that particular pilot well not only is that pilot the asshole for not being able to have the insurance to now cover that lady's fall which he really didn't have anything to do with except he neglected to essentially showcase that his area was clear of obstacles and was clear of people something that you are required to do as an fa part 107 certificate holder and let's say that he hurt himself to a point which maybe he didn't kill himself but he hurt himself to a point where now he is in a hospital in icu well, while his insurance may have covered that um, if he was not a part, you know, if he was a hobbyist and he was just doing stuff for fun, it's very clear and there is a track record online that he was not just doing this for fun. He was making um, business gains from it or his family was, okay? The insurance company finds out and now he's not insured. Let's say that he has some other health complication. Maybe he's a little bit older, he's in his 40s or 50s, he's got high blood pressure, he's been in and out of the doctor's office for a long time, he hasn't been exercising or eating to the standards that his doctor set. He goes into ICU for some other problems, complication, now he's, he's dead, okay? Yikes. So, now I know this is like worst case scenario, but I'm really trying to paint a picture here. If you do not have a Part 107 certificate and something catastrophic happens, the insurance is not going to cover you if you are not following FAA guidelines, which means that because you are selling that picture, that means it's Part 107 and your insurance isn't going to cover you. Oh, my God. <laughs> so what does that mean? That means that your family now, so the pilot's family, is now responsible for any damages to the old lady any damages to the house, any damages to the drone pilot, and now the life insurance that that pilot might have had on himself or his family through a previous employment engagement or he just had life insurance, the life insurance will not pay out. Why? 
Very simple. Because the insurance company that had the drone insurance didn't pay out. Why? Because you weren't following F8 guidelines. Remember, an insurance company, if you're not following the, their law to the T, they can literally refuse your claim that fast. So now the pilot's not only the asshole for not ensuring that his area was clear of obstacles, he's not only the asshole because he can't pay the old lady, even though it's really her fault for tripping in his workspace. But now he can't cover the damages, and now his life insurance can't protect his family, and now he's left all that debt with his family. What an asshole. So it's not just about the decisions that you make as a pilot. It's the decisions that you make that affect the people around you. And I don't know about you guys, but I never want to be the one caught holding the bag. I never want to be the one at fault for something like that. So that's why I have always gone the legit way. I've seen many instances where things could go bad really fast if I wasn't on my stuff, quote unquote. And before we answer this question, I just want to say, to everyone out there, if you're a pilot and you're doing the right thing, rest assured, you're doing the right thing. To everyone who did not renew their Part 107 certificates, you know who you are. You are now risking your family's financial success, well-being, and everyone around you, okay? It's not just the decisions that you're making. And I, you, know who I, you know who I'm talking <laughs> to uh, if, you're, if you're listening to this. And there's a couple of particular people at very high-end companies who did this. And you are now risking the company too. So just think about that. So the moral of the story, get and keep your 107 if you're going to fly commercially. Why not? It's so easy. It's so easy. Like literally, it's so easy. You don't have to go spend $10,000 uh, to go fly a stupid powered parachute or ultralight or Cessna or any of that crap, right? You don't have to do that. You don't have to go through months and months of training and wasted time. You don't have to go sit in a plane with a bunch of geriatrics and wondering whether who's going to puke first, you or them. All right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I say that because our old instructors took me up for a plane ride, and I had eaten about an hour before that. What a mistake. <laughs> yes, I threw up in a plane. It was the first time Live and learn. I have Live ever and learn. thrown up in an aircraft. And That's after funny. thousands of hours of piloting them and flying in them, um, I, that happens. So... Anyway, um, my point is, I, I really just want to make a really, really powerful point here. For those who are in compliance, they're doing the right thing. Do not waste a moment of your time worrying about other people. If you want to go ahead and report them to FISDO to have them worry about it, go for it. Because guess what? We all know what's going to happen. Compliance philosophy. Merry Christmas. Okay? If that makes you feel better, do it. If not, don't do it. Every minute you spend worrying is a minute that you're not spending on sending an email, on reaching out to someone, on doing a demonstration, speaking for an association, working a charity event for someone just to get your name out there. Those are all things that you can be doing for good, and they're all things that you can be doing to set the expectations properly in this industry. But... Um, now that we played the question. So what does part 107 say about this? I think that it's fairly clear that it's... Why don't you go ahead and read what you had? It's okay I, to do I, it. I think that uh, what you had is exactly what the... I keep saying law, but it's regulation, what the regulations state. Yeah, sure. So it says, um, let's see, no person may manipulate the flight controls of a small unmanned aircraft system unless the person has a remote pilot certificate with a small UAS rating issued pursuant to... This part and satisfies the requirements of 107 or, emphasis on or, that person is under the direct supervision of a remote pilot in command and the remote pilot in command has the ability to immediately take direct control of the flight of the small unmanned aircraft, meaning they are on site next to that person and can take the controller from them if they need to. Yeah, that also means that you're within five to eight feet of that, of that person because I've seen a FISDO guy come down on other pilots for that before. Um, also, in the uh, Drone U field kit, which I really need to update and have like a, a field guide that's like less than 10 pages, in the field kit, in the summary on page 108, the FAA says, therefore, the person manipulating the flight controls must be able to see the small unmanned aircraft at the time of handoff sufficiently well to satisfy the visual line of sight requirements of this rule. The FAA also emphasizes that 107.19 section Charlie requires the remote pilot in command to ensure that the small unmanned aircraft will not pose an undue hazard to other aircraft, people, or property on the ground if positive control is lost. 
Thus, the remote pilot in command must ensure that the technology and method used for conducting the handoff does not unduly increase the risk associated with a possible loss of positive control. So, it is very clear that this guy, so I'm just going to play guy. Hey guys, you guys want to fly some drones? I got the license. You can do it, whatever you like, huh? That's fine. As long as he's on site with that drone operator and he's within 10 feet of the drone operator because whoever is manipulating the flight controls doesn't have to be part 107 as long as there is a part 107 remote pilot certificate holder uh, with that person within 10 feet, let's just call it 10 feet, and able to take over the flight controls. And they are also one of the two people is also maintaining visual line of sight. Here's the key, right? If two people... Two separate people had two separate operations and they both wanted to use this guy's part 107 license. And he's not on site for both those operations as they're simultaneously going on. Now the guy who's renting out his license is liable for breaking part 107 in a way that is so egregious, I'm pretty sure that FISDO would not do the whole compliance philosophy with this guy. I think it would be more like... It would be worse, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, on that point, that's an interesting point because even if you had, it does say that you can't fly multiple drones. So I assume if and I'm not sure where to read that specifically real quickly here, but that would mean you can't supervise two drones flying at the same time as that, well. That's correct. And we actually had that clarified last year when we had some uh, FPV racers who were trying to get into flying. So, yeah. um, but that is correct. Um, yeah. So you can't have multiple people flying. The other thing too is no matter what the person does manipulating the flight controls, the FAA RPIC is still ultimately responsible for ensuring that every single rule of part 107 was followed. So if your competition is using this guy and you go do an investigation yourself and you take some footage for whatever reason of people flying and you can show that they're not following the rules for whatever reason, obviously that's going to be some really great evidence. I'm just not sure that the FAA cares. And I'm not sure you should either, which is why yeah. I started this show with why the hell do you care? So you should be focusing on getting jobs, on doing marketing, on doing, you know, if well, someone's doing something better than you, then it should be really good, really good motivation for you to figure out exactly what they're doing and how they're doing it. Mm -hmm. Kind of like how our competitors copied us. It's, it's really, it's really empowered me to say, okay, how come these people are so good at marketing? What are they doing? Why is Alan getting so much response without any experience? So it's really forced me, motivated me, inspired me to do more, which is ultimately I should be thanking that asshole. So, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it was inevitable. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, on the point of insurance for this person or if somebody is going to do this, because again, it is allowed, you better make sure that your insurance covers somebody flying other than you under your supervision. Don't assume Talk to your agent and make sure that's included in your policy. Yeah, if 100%, this is you, hundred percent. So, anyway, cool. I think we answered that question quite well. I hope so. Yeah, I think so. Obviously, we always say, if, if you not, have, call yeah, us back. Yeah, if you have a question, go to askadroni dot com. And if you love the show, you love the information, but you want more organized information, you want to learn things soup to nuts. That way, you can go out and make money yourself. You got to become a DroneU member. Just sign up. DroneU.education on that bombshell. It's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. You're watching another episode of Ask DroneU. Drone